Fora TV. The world is thinking. Does or should the ACLU provide the public policymakers with your proposals for fighting terrorism? There's a couple questions here about um, that. What are the alternatives? What trade-offs would you be willing to make in terms of civil liberties in a time of war? What are your alternatives? Yeah. Well, I think taking the, the first part of that question first, it, it's a very good question. And in fact, it's one that we've worked very hard at the ACLU, is to make sure that we're not just oppositional to all of the proposals and policies that come uh, down the pike or that are suggested by policymakers. I think we do have an essential role to suggest ideas and ways that we can ensure the safety and the freedom of the American people. I, I think if we were only oppositional and throwing stones at, at, at any of the, uh, the glass houses in Washington and not proffering good ideas and alternatives, we would not be serving our, our full job. We have, a, we have something on our website, we have a document on our website that's on our safe and free section of the website where we discuss security measures that we believe would help assure our security without compromising our civil liberties. There are things, for instance, uh, that we didn't take issue with in the Patriot Act. The, the Patriot Act was enacted 45 days after the 9-11 attacks. It's a 345-page document. Much of what's in the law we never took issue with. They were good changes to the laws. They were necessary changes to the laws. Who can argue, for instance, when, when the government and the, the INS sent Mohammed Atta an immigration visa two months after he took the planes into the World Trade Center? Who can argue with the need for greater information sharing across the federal agencies? Uh, there was an absolutely fundamental breakdown that needed to be addressed. Our concern is with the how, not with the if. Now, we need to fight the war on terror, but how we do it is an essential part of it. And I th much of what we've argued in the, in, in, the, in the last five and almost six years has been the need to keep both safety and freedom primary in people's minds. That one is not the maid servant or the hand servant of the other. That if you had safety without freedom, you would have a dictatorship or totalitarian regime. And if you had freedom without safety, you would have anarchy. That much of what defines America is having both on co-equal terms. And when you think about the ways in which the, the, the policies and rules of the Bush administration have undercut our civil liberties for a semblance of national security, when, when in fact you have the Bush administration summarily arrest and deport thousands of immigrants who had no connection to the 9-11 attacks, who are individuals who were here for minor, with minor immigration violations that would never have subjected them to to jail time or to deportation, being summarily deported, that does not increase our safety. And it certainly undercuts a nation that's, that's committed to freedom and to equality. When you allow, for instance, in the part, one part of the Patriot Act that we take strong issue with, when you allow the government to execute national security letters, which are basically known, uh, they're a form of administrative subpoenas, they're, uh, they're administrative warrants, with no judge ever signing off on that warrant, that the government can access your internet records, your financial records, your employment records, your health records, your library records, and that the government has done so in more than 149,000 cases since the 2001 attacks. When you have no judge looking over the shoulder of the executive branch, when you upset that system of checks and balances, that kind of, that basic Hamiltonian, Madisonian genius that the reason why you have three branches of government is to make sure that no one branch of government becomes abusive. And when you completely carve out the judicial branch from those self-executing warrants, we take issue with that because we don't think that's the proper way of fighting the war on terror. I think the question for us longer term is how do we adapt to an age where we'll never be able to assure ourselves that there won't be another terrorist attack? I think our elected officials have failed the American people by not preparing us for the inevitability of another attack. The fact that, uh, that we and the American people, if another attack happens, would feel that they need to do more to sacrifice the civil liberties has really meant that they have, uh, they have shrugged their responsibilities. 
But we need to remind the American people as even as we fight the war on terror, even as we make sure that we do our best to protect the American people, that it follows some basic rules of the road. And that democracy, even though it might fight with one hand tied behind its back, that democracy always has the upper hand. Uh, and that's a fundamental belief in the, in the long-term greatness of our founding principles and some of the founding institutions.